I was just looking at this press release here. It's about Mount Union coach Larry Karras going into the National College Football Hall of Fame. He's going in the same class, get this, with Peyton Manning, Marshall Falk, and Steve Spurrier. Larry Karras, the longtime coach at Mount Union. And so, among other things, I kept looking at this. His record, how about this? 332 and 24. 332, that's wins. 24 losses. That's 24 losses in 27 years. Or if you even want to kind of bring it closer to home. Basically, in 27 years coaching at Mount Union, Larry Karras has lost fewer games than the Browns have in the last two years because the Browns are at uh, 27 losses and counting. So you take all that into consideration, and, and, and there's winning, but I think the Larry Karras thing is pretty fascinating to me on a different level. Number one is this is a guy who could have went and coached at a higher level. When you win 11 national titles at Division Three at Mount Union, uh, clearly schools have come calling. I know over the years he was offered jobs at Princeton, at UMass, and at Kent State. And I'm sure there are others, and he turned them all down to stay in Alliance. He grew up not far from there. He went to Ravenna High School, and uh, that's always been home for him. He played quarterback at Mount Union. He was an assistant coach at Mount Union for 11 years before he took over as head coach. And frankly, it took him seven years to win his first national title. He never envisioned Mount Union being the kind of national power that it is now, but that's what happened there. And one of the keys to Mount Union's success over all the years, now his son has been coaching the last four years, Vince. Vince has won one national title. But one of the keys is then, then the continuity, the Karras family at Mount Union. Mount Union also is a school that produces a lot of teachers and coaches. So right now, you go across the state of Ohio, and there's a lot of them also living in Florida. You have Mount Union graduates coaching high school teams all over the place. So what happens when they have that kind of pretty good player who's not getting a scholarship offer, but it really looks good for college football? You have the coach saying, you know, I went to Mount Union. I had a great time. Probably the coach is showing him a national championship ring. You could go there. You could play there. And the fact that Larry Karras stayed there all these years, we, we talked about this a couple of times. I've known Larry going back to before he even won his first title. You know, one of the reasons that part of the reason he turned on some of the jobs was that um, his father had had a stroke, and he and his wife Linda were helping everybody kind of and take care of uh, Larry's dad. You know, other times he just said, you know, I don't want to lose my family. You know, most of the time these coaches at these upper level schools they don't get home till midnight. They're on the road recruiting all the time across the country. Division three, uh, you don't go recruiting across the country because. This is not what you do. Secondly, you call, even during the season, you call Larry Karras at home, 8.30 or 9 o'clock. He's there. As he said, you know, part of it, too, is kind of having your family and you in a comfortable place. So to me, I look at this, you know, Larry Karras did the right things for the right reasons, won gigantic amount of titles and everything else. And, you know, a lot of the country doesn't know him, but there it'll be. Tuesday night on the same stage with Peyton Manning, Marshall Falk, and Steve Spurrier, and he belongs there as he goes into the College Hall of Fame.